This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description. Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio, back with this absolutely skanky ass map that should be nowhere near any kind of cards yet. Here we are. So hopefully this is a little bit clearer than the layout I've been using uh, in the last few days, or last few videos I should say. Uh, I've got some additional lighting objects to try and make this look a little bit slicker, so it looks a little bit cleaner, but it's still not perfect, we've still got a long way to go. Anyway, I'm not going to be showing you my face today, because frankly I can't be fucking bothered, so there you go. But we're going to be looking at my Zodiac Tri-Brigade deck this time around. Uh, we've made some changes. We realised quite swiftly after last event that the deck cannot play going second, and I found out the hard way by losing every single dice roll, and being forced to play Go Second Tri Brigade for an entire 11 rounds. So as you can imagine, that went about as woeful as you'd expect. It wasn't a great experience. So instead, I decided to chop things up, and my experience has been considerably better since. Now, let me also apologise if there's any grunting or heavy breathing in the background. It's not likely to be me, although I could well be passing out. I'm sure you'll find out over a faceplant in the middle of the video. However, my pug is hanging around me like fucking crazy. And uh, yeah, he's a big fan of getting close to where I am and just making a lot of noises. And it's not really his fault. There's not much I can do about it. He's just built different. Now, before we get into the profile, if you are looking to pick up any Yu-Gi-Oh! singles, you should check out the channel sponsors, Jam Jam Cards UK. There will be a link down in the description to their eBay store, and if you go ahead and use that, you'll get a discount on their eBay store, courtesy of yours truly. And remember, if this is your first time here, you should definitely hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and if this is not your first time here, well, you may want to give your head a wobble. So we're going to be doing today's video in sections. The first part, we're just going to quickly run through the profile without much explanation. We're just going to be covering ratios and that kind of thing. Uh, and then we're going to go back over in a little bit more detail exactly why I've got the ratios I have. Although most of it's cookie cutter, so there's not much to talk about. However, for those of you who don't play the deck yet and maybe considering picking it up, this may be helpful for you. So let's get stuck into the profile. So we start off today's profile with triple copies of Novel, triple copies of Kit, triple copies of Fractal, and double copies of Keras. Following on from that, we have our Zoo package, which is a Rat Pier and two Thoroughblades. Then our Triple Ash Blossom and Joy of Spring, and Triple Effect Veiler to make up our Hand Traps. Then for spells, Triple Fire Formation Tenki, Triple Pot of Desires, Triple Tactics, Triple Tactics Talent, one Barrage, and one Call by the Grave. And then for our trap lineup, we have one, two, three copies of Revolt, three copies of Infinite Impermanence, three copies of Solemn Strike, and a single copy of Imperial Order to bring us to 41 cards in the main. Then onto the extra decks, so we have a single copy of Bear Brum, two copies of Ferrigit, a single copy of Rugal, two copies of Shreg, a single Almirage, a single Double Dragon Lords, a single Doom Eagle. A single Appaloosa, a single Access Code Talker, Borbo, Chaka 9, Tiger Mortar, and Zeus. And then obligatory tokens. And then the side deck is kind of relevant, mostly just to my locals, but you'll get some ideas of things that you can include. So we've got a single copy of Pancratops, two copies of Phantasme, triple Droll and Lockbird, triple copies of Twin Twisters. Triple Anti-Spell Fragrance, Double Solemn Judgment, and a single copy of Red Reboot. So for those of you who are just here to get your ratios in, now you can bugger off. And for those of you who are not uncultured swine, you may hang around and talk some theory with me. So, we've got triple copies of Nerval. Uh, you know what, I probably started off wrong with that and saying talking some theory. There's not much theory to go into this. Triple, triple, triple... And double. Uh, you basically want as many names as you can get. And this is just the worst one that you don't really want to see. You want to only search it. But you do need multiple copies because you basically just want the extra ability to grind a little bit longer. A lot of the time you'll find in grind games your opponent just counts your monsters. And if they realise you're about out, or maybe you only have one or two left, they'll know that they can start grinding you to the hill a little bit and this just gives you an extra option to just stay in for that little bit longer third copy you really don't want it there's a lot of times i've considered running it but honestly i just don't feel it comes up enough and honestly it's just not worth bricking on it's the worst one to see you kind of just want to search it 
So the trial lineup is pretty standard. Of course, we're onto the Zodiac package. I think this is more or less standard as well. Uh, we've got a Rat Pier and two Thorough Blades. Um, if you don't have a second Thorough Blade, which I didn't the other day, I was running uh, Whip Tail. Um, you can run Ram Ram instead, but honestly, this is just the best ratio, the best ones that you can use. There are others you can consider, but I think three is plenty as well. Really, we just have three copies of this, but, you know, we're not so lucky. That would be the dream, honestly, but it's not going to happen. So, yeah, those are the ratios you run on the zoos. Honestly, I think three is more than enough. And then on to hand traps. We've got triple Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring and triple copies of Effect Veiler. So this is a little bit weird. It feels strange not playing Gamma in the deck. Um, I've run Gamma for so long. Obviously, with the Rescue Cat build, it's absolutely insane. But in the zoo build, it comes up a lot less. You can definitely fit it in here if you want to. But I was fed up with, like, bricking on driver or, you know, you open a gamma and then after turn one, it's kind of dead. It's insane turn one. It's better than basically any other hand trap. But after that, it's so much worse. It's just unfortunate that that's how it works out. Obviously, the benefits, I believe, outweigh the negatives. But we don't really have the room for it in here. And that's absolutely fine. And instead of running effect failure because we're all worried about the mirror match. Um, and a lot of the other top decks lose to this where they can kind of play around Gamma a little bit and then Ash Blossom is Ash Blossom. Uh, it beats every rogue deck pretty much instantly and there's a lot of decks that if they open a bad hand, you know, that's enough to end their turn. So uh, we're just on the six hand traps if you don't include the imperms. Um, it's felt absolutely fine so far. There's sometimes I wish I had more, but honestly, I think the power from the other cards that we're playing in the deck make it all worth it. On to Triple Tanky. Uh, it's Triple Tanky. Uh, it's normally mandatory in the standard builds. And of course, now we're playing the Zoo Package. It's even more mandatory. Triple copies of Desires. You play it in this one because you need your extra deck. And honestly, it's just insane every single time. It's literally part of Greed. Ignore the fact that it says Banish 10, especially in this deck when one of two things is going to happen. You're either going to open an insane hand, in which case you're going to search through like half your deck. And you're going to get all your key cards out anyway, so it doesn't matter. And then you can just Desires, draw an extra two cards, and make sure that your opponent loses. Or you're in a position where you would lose anyway, and you aren't going to see those cards, so you just draw two and hope for the best. So honestly, no reason not to play this at three when you're playing this particular build. Triple Tactics Talent. This is one that, when I've been talking with the guys, sometimes they love it, sometimes they hate it. And that is the truth. It kind of punishes you if your opponent doesn't play. Uh, if your opponent just sits there and just takes a beat in, it doesn't do anything. Uh, which is kind of sad, but... There is not much a better feeling than your opponent stopping you with like a hand trap. They think your turn's over and then you absolutely fuck them up with this. Like hand knowledge is insane. It's so important in this, especially in stuff like the mirror match where it can come in really, really handy. Uh, where you've got to be very, very resourceful. And against, again, against like rogue decks and stuff where they've got like one or two key cards. If you see it in their hand, you know that they're not going to get a turn next turn unless they draw it again. So... Stuff like that. You can also draw two if you need to get deeper, which sometimes comes up. Or on occasion, you can snatch stuff. Like, for example, in the mirror, uh, you can snatch a tri Brigade on their side of the field, like a Shrag, say. And then you can banish a card on their side of the field shortly afterwards. So, little benefits like that. I think it's really, really strong, but I can see why people might not run it. Uh, some people might prefer the likes of, say, Forbidden Droplet. Or they might prefer just additional hand traps. That's entirely up to you. If you can't afford these, probably just... Put in, I don't know, Solemns or something like that, I guess. They're a bit cheaper or additional hand traps. And then our two one offs Barrage and Call by the Grave. Not much to say really about these. Uh, Call by the Grave is absolutely insane. I wish it was at three, uh, but it's not. So we have to play it at once. And now it's just Saki instead. And then we've got Zodiac Barrage. This... This, with like any other card, can honestly just save your turn. The amount of times where I get my one Tri Brigade stopped, uh, and then I have Barrage in hand, and I can just activate Barrage, get Zodiac out, and go off from there. And then finally, in the main, we have our trap lineup. So, Triple Revolt. This is one for those of you who've been watching the channel for a little while will know. I've been saying for ages I've really wanted to play this at three. I've finally done it, and I have not regretted it at all. There's been some games where I've opened multiples. That's fine. I'd rather open multiples than none at all. Uh, having the third obviously gives you a little bit more length in the grind game because the cards all replace themselves, they'll replenish and give you more resources, um, which is much, much better in the uh, in the, in the the mirror. And if your opponent opens stuff like, say, a Cosmic Cyclone, you've opened two, then you're good to go because it doesn't matter. You can set both and your opponent will yeet one unless you're really unlucky and they twin twisters you, but what can you do? Um, but a lot of the time, the third comes up more than you would think and it, it's really, really cool. I really like it and I definitely wouldn't cut it back down again. Infinite Impermanence at three. It's kind of a hand trap. It's good going first or second for obvious reasons. You can just set it and yeet your opponent. You can play mind games with your opponent as well and set other stuff in the same column as them to scare them a little bit, make them think it's impermanence. It's really important in the mirror, and that is something we have to keep in mind because the mirror is our hardest matchup. So yeah, it's good for that. It's good for just about everything else. Of course, it doesn't lose to Gamma. It doesn't lose to Call by the Grave. So all of that good stuff. 
We got a triple solemn strike. This has been one of the best additions to the deck. I am so happy I decided to play this at three in here. I love this card. It's so good. Drawing into this off your tribe brigades when they go to grave. That kind of thing is just absolutely insane. Setting this up with a revolt can put you in so much protection. The amount of times that this alone on, on their summon is the end of their turn. It's just absolutely nuts. It stops everything. Really, really strong. I highly recommend playing it. And then finally, we have our win button Imperial Order. It's like a 50-50 card, right? It's one of those cards that's either going to stop your opponent from playing the game, or it's going to do absolutely nothing. So it can be a very, very easy side out, especially if you're going second and that kind of thing along with the strikes, but otherwise it's a very, very good card to see in your opening hand. Now on to the extra deck. So uh, one Brum, uh, one is plenty in this particular build. Obviously it'd be nice to have more, but we don't really have the space. Uh, two Ferragit, again, much the same thing. I wish, you know, we could afford to have three in there because you'd have it for the grind, but you don't need it. It doesn't come up enough and you need those spaces. We've got a single copy of Rugal. Ron. One is just plenty. Uh, there are a couple of times where I've thought a second might come up, but Honestly, one is more than enough. It's just there for the combo. Uh, we've got double Shurag. I really wish I could play the third, but we really don't have the space. Um, so yeah, just two copies of that. It's obviously like the best card in the extra deck. Absolutely insane. Uh, it's probably the reason the deck is even playable, quite honestly. This and Revolt together is just absolutely nuts. We then move on to our non-try cards. We've got Almirage. This is obviously for when you open that deadass, just a single kit or Nerval. It allows you to actually be able to play the game a little bit. Um, we've got Double Dragon Lords. Of course, Bouncy Boy, absolutely quality. The Doom Eagle. Um, I wish I didn't have to play it, but there really isn't a better option. That's a Link 3 that you can easily use to climb into Access Code Toker or just get damage on the board. Or, of course, there's some games where it comes up where the effect allows you to shuffle back and puts you in an advantageous position. We then have one Appaloosa, uh, you need it for the combo, like that you're normally going to go down with this and Revolt is normally your end board, uh, and then finally Access Code Talker because it wins games. And that rounds up our links, we're now onto our X seeds, so we've got one single ugly ass gold Shackanine, uh, it's Shackanine, it's like, if you open a zoo on your turn one play and you know it's going to go through, or you don't open any tries, this is what you're going to go for, because it's going to allow you, especially if you've opened Rat, to go into a Ferragit and go off from there. We've got a single copy of Borbo. This is obviously to poke through on your opponent, allow you to easily get into Zeus. We've got Tiger Mortar, mostly as an additional name. The other effect doesn't come up all that often, but it's there if you want it. And then finally, we have Zeus, because it's a win button. Between this and Access Code Talk, you've got plenty of go second options, and this is the reason I wanted to play this variant of the deck. I was losing all my go second games i'd just lose the dice roll and then i'd lose because it was unwinnable i'd open insane hands that if i was going first i would just be winning but it wasn't enough to get me over the line so this particular variant of the build allows me to play a little bit more which is why i prefer it it's uh it's got some weaknesses compared to the others but honestly i think this is the best one overall and then finally, we'll talk about the side deck for those of you who are interested. Again, this is mostly built around the fact that we're attending locals and we're mostly scared of the match because otherwise it's generally okay. Uh, so we've got a single copy of Pankratops. Um, insane. Still insane card. I really honestly think this should be like the first card on everyone's go side. Go second side list. This is what you need in there. Uh, we've got Phantasma. Just double copies because that's all we had room for. I was playing a three. Again, mirror match in mind. Um, but not just a mirror match. There's a lot of other decks that require target. And this just gives you an extra layer of protection. Allows you to dig a little bit deeper. And also allows you to fix your hands. We then have triple copies of Droll and Lockbird. Um, the subdecks are just auto lose to this, so it's really nice to have in here. I was playing this at two copies before and then, you know, used the odd numbers for the additional one ofs and that kind of thing. Uh, but I've gone up to three because the decks where you need to see it, you just need to see it and then you win. Um, and then the rest of the time, it's like irrelevant anyway. Uh, triple copies of Twin Twisters. Um, back row is still a thing. Um, this could be Cosmic Cyclones instead if you really prefer. I just like Twin Twisters because I like just ripping my opponent's back row out. It's really strong in the mirror as well because it just absolutely claps the fuck out of their revolt. Forces them to go early, which can put you in a really good position. Triple copies of Anti-Spell Fragrance. Um, it's not relevant in every matchup, but the decks where it is relevant against, it's like having additional copies of Imperial Order. Of course, stuff like Pendulum and Sky Striker don't come up too often, but when they do, this is absolutely insane against them. But a lot of the other decks, if you don't see the Imperial Order, this is enough to slow your opponent down to the point where you can just beat them that way instead. 
We have two copies of Solemn Judgment. This is literally all we had room for. Um, I wish I could play the third. This card's absolutely insane. If I'm going first, this is usually going to get sided in. This helps to protect you against a lot of bullshit stuff. Like if your opponent knows you're going to go first, they'll side in stuff like Lightning Storms. Especially with them being a bit more uh, available to the public and a bit cheaper, a bit easier to get get hold of. People will drop stuff like Harpy's Feather Duster into the main as well to get rid of your revolts early. This is just going to help make sure that you get over the line. And then finally, we have a single copy of Red Reboot because the theory is, we haven't been able to try this out yet, that it should be insane in the mirror. Of course, Reboot in their Revolt, you should be able to OTK your opponent after that. And there's a lot of other decks, of course, where that kind of thing comes up as well. If you're against your dolls and you're playing into them, you can Red Reboot the Schism and stop them going insane. There's all kinds of good stuff. And of course, other people play in Solemn Judgments, that kind of stuff. This is just going to help you get over that line. And that is all for today's deck profile. Hopefully this has given you some ideas of what you could do with your own list if you're looking to play this deck. Maybe give you some ideas on ratios, maybe even just some side deck ideas. Like I say, it's not super anti cookie cutter if that's how you want to put it it's nothing too crazy off the wall um the decks kind of flow the same sort of way there's just one or two ratios that i'm doing slightly differently that work well for me so maybe you can try them out for yourself again thank you very much for coming along i do appreciate you making it this far into the video you're one of the few who does so if you haven't already you should definitely consider hitting subscribe hopefully you've enjoyed it enough to have made it this far or maybe you just hate it enough that you couldn't possibly look away in either case smash that red button but anyway that's enough waffling on from me thank you very much for coming along i do really appreciate it and i will see you in the next one Thank <laughs> you.